All right, so let's take a look at these water brush markers from Recollections, which is the Michaels brand. Now, at first blush, they look a lot like um, other water brushes that we've seen. Uh, I'm just gonna pick one up here and show you carefully. That what you have is a true paintbrush style marker. It has the color indicator on the whole handle, which is very handy. It has a nice little indentation for your grip. And then you can see just how many bristles there are, that this is really a true brush style. Um, well, it's a paintbrush is what it is. So I wanna show you, I'm gonna do just a little bit of swatching for you. And because it has so many bristles, you definitely get this kind of brushy, paint strokey thing and the slower you go kind of the more control and coverage you're going to have so you get all of these like bold lines if you go slow but if you go fast the bristles separate so that's the first thing i want to bring into you is that it's just it's not very juicy um and for those of us who like a nice juicy paintbrush um, this falls a little short. So one of the things I first want to point out is that there's no way to squeeze the product from the barrel through the bristles. Uh, in many other products, you absolutely can do this. So for example, with the Jane Davenport's, um, if you want a little more product to come out, you can kind of squeeze the barrel and force a drop to come out so that then you can actually treat it like a watercolor sadly you cannot do this at all with this product so it's just you're kind of at the whim as to how much comes out at a time so let's take a look at some of the color swatches I actually created these color swatches for you on watercolor paper so that you could um, see how they work and so that we can actually test them together to see how they blend once they've been put down so again, we see that um, if you go slower, you can get some very nice brush lettering effects. You get the basic RGBiv uh, color palette and then a brown and a black, which I like. I like the fact that they include a black. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is just clean off my water brush a little bit. And we are going to test how they blend after the fact. So I can get them to lift and move, but as you can see here, um, they're not lifting 100%. Let me get some more water over here. And actually, in some cases, they're actually moving very little, which means to me that once they dry, they're semi-permanent and they don't really want to go places, which is okay as long as you know that and that's the effect that you yourself are going for. You can get a little, you can get a little bit of it to move and blend, but um, I wouldn't consider this 100% kind of a watercolory effect because you can't move it completely. I also did those swatches on a little bit of regular cardstock. This is just 85 pound weight. And we're gonna do the same test here by just adding a few drops. We're gonna let that sit for a minute. And as you can see, I'm, I'm seeing a reaction happening right away in this green. You see how it's already starting to move and kind of pull out? So that's good, because that way it's letting me know that it is staying water reactive on the traditional cardstock, which is kind of surprising. Um, so you will be able to get some different effects. All right, so for this next kind of live demo portion, what I'm gonna do is kind of create a little ombre here. I've been a little obsessed with these kind of cards lately. And I start off by just oop, making a little bit of a mess, obviously. It's okay, I don't mind if there's a little bit of color in the water because we're gonna cover that up. And I'm gonna create a little, like a little water bath for it to play in. I'm trying to keep it taped down, but my uh, surface really is non-stick and it does not wanna stay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use some of these water brushes to try and get this color to move and blend, and I'm seeing it blend out. That's kind of nice. All right, let's 
just do a little more blendy blendy with another color. It's a little challenging. I don't know if you can see here on the bristles, but actually the bristles are starting to go kind of white where the product is leaching out of them and it's not replacing very quickly into the nib, which I kind of consider an issue because, um, you know, at this point we should be able to squeeze it and get it to move and I just quite can't. So I'm just going to add some stripes down and then see if I can blend them with the water. And again, these don't really want to move a whole lot once you put them down. So I'm really kind of disappointed with this effect. And honestly, I'm just thinking that these are not very easy to use or effective for what they are marketed for. Okay, just for fun, I thought I would pull this apart to see how they really are constructed. And what you can see here is that they really are built like a marker. Here is all of your ink into this nib. And um, here is the brush tip. I've completely destroyed it for you. So you can see how it works. Um, but this explains why you can't actually squish the barrel and make the product come out because... It isn't actually free flowing in there. Um, so if you're gonna get a brush style marker that is just a straight up marker, like this one actually is, I would save your money and go with another product like um, the Zig Real Color, or um, if you like the ones that have, I actually also really like the Nuvos, although this also has the squeeze barrel. Um, I just don't think that even for, you know, under $10, I think these were like six or seven dollars, uh, that you're going to get enough mileage out of it. You just don't get enough ink down and, uh, it's just, I hate to say it, but it's not a great product. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of those things that I would counsel you unless you have small kids. If you want to use this for children, this is what you want to save this product for, uh, you know, just letting the kids have fun and making them feel like they're a little Picassos in a, with a paintbrush. But if it's for um, adult or student use, I would save your money and go with either a Nuvo or one of the Jane Davenport style brush tip markers or the Zigs. Those are all good choices. Um, so I hope this was helpful and informative. Maybe I saved you some money. I will say that my final project I don't think it looks bad. I think it, you know, it's pretty passable, but I could get better results with um, better products. Just saying. So please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can learn more about craft products and which ones will save you money here at crafttestummies.com. Have a crafty day.